Hello. Hello. Happy Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Happy, Day. Happy second parent day to those that don't have a man as, as a parent. And to those uh, to oldest uh, <laughs> siblings who had to be. Yeah, to uncles. <laughs> to uncles. <laughs> To, you know next door neighbors my my brother had um his college football coach was a father figure in Aww, his life that's sweet yeah. yeah well happy all of that to y'all i hope that yeah. you are enjoying your sunday um i lost my father years ago so i have a routine mm -hmm. that i do in the mornings and i did that um and it felt good it felt good this year um, make sure if you have not, you like, subscribe, share, tell a friend to tell a friend about Sunday Shift. And comments. Oh, yeah. And comment. We love the comments. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we probably will have a lot of comments this week because oh, like, right. we, we see a lot of movement with Trina. And when we talk about Trina, that's always like a generative topic, not a bad thing. I actually really love hearing what people think about right. like how, how she's being written, how things are moving. So there's a lot yeah. to talk about. Um, yeah. How's your, how was your week? I was a lot, <laughs> and um, but there were some good moments um, this week. What did I? What? Obviously, you know, watching the Acolyte, which was awesome. Oh, yeah, I haven't watched For it. For those yet. of you guys haven't watched it, um, it's a departure from the normal Star Wars fair. And That's Amanda is saying. in this, right? Amanda is in Manny Jacinto. In, in and, Manny Jacinto? In Manny Jacinto. Oh, what a beautiful man. My goodness. <laughs> Does he have like a mask on or do you get to see how beautiful he is on the show? I'm going to have to look it up because I don't recognize him. <laughs> You're so... like, I don't know, Manny. <laughs> I'm no, sure it's just like, <laughs> it's like how the Mandalorian, it's like, here's Pedro Pascal. Manny. Yeah, everyone knows him. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, because. You could you like even his his mannerisms behind the the mask of Pedro Pascal is obvious. It's him. Well, sometimes because he says sometimes it's not him. <laughs> oh well, I guess somebody who's yeah. doing this, later uh, later seasons when he become a bigger star, a bigger star, he can make oh, demands. He can be like, yeah, I'm a need I'm doing voice I'm, double. I'm doing voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> no, in my mind, it's him. It's always him. Oh, I'm sorry to mess that up. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so I had a pretty good week. Did a lot of bike riding. That's mm. great. And, you know, relaxing. And, yeah. I'm going to say you some pictures of Manny. Manny, uh, Manny was on um, The Good Place. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and just like some other things. I've just been waiting for him to, like, blow up, blow up. Because he's such a good comedic actor oh, and, like, a oh. good dramatic actor. I think he's yeah. I think he's playing a sketchy guy. I'm sure and he has long. And he has longer hair. Yes, <laughs> and so that's why I, I'm looking at Google right now, looking at his photos, and he yeah, he looks different. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. Have you seen The Good Place? No, but some people have been tweeting about it lately, or or social media about it, and saying it's really no. A friend of mine did it on Facebook. He says it's really good, and I'm like, okay. It's pretty excellent and i would say yeah. um they were one of those shows that ended on their own terms okay and the finale was just like one of the most perfect finales i've ever seen awesome it was really good okay um and don't read too much about it because like you gotta you gotta like be in it the first season like you gotta yeah, yeah and no. i'm hearing well, I saw on Netflix that the second half of the Bridgerton series is out. So is. now I can binge it because I still haven't seen the first four. Okay. Now I can binge the whole thing. I don't know when I'm going to have the time, though. <laughs> I, I love that my face is like, mm. oh. Oh, okay. have you I seen mean, it? I have. I've also, I'm also like a fan of the books and uh -huh. like, um, this like these leads like this this uh book was not my favorite it was never okay. they, but i do love nicola the woman mm -hmm. who plays the lead penelope um i think she's like a, a bright shining star like she's amazing she's like funny and she is serious and i just think the world of her i think 
that's baby girl right there. And I still like, I'm like, I hated your season girl. <laughs> Speaking of, um, somebody had made a comment to her when she was doing her press tour about her, her parents, her physical appearance and how mm. they were like, oh, you must have felt so nervous doing the sex scenes. And, and then, you know, how do you feel about it? And she's like, no, I'm, you know, it was great. I mean, you don't get to see enough people like me doing these kind of scenes. Women with perfect breasts aren't always shown all the time. And so I'm happy about it. I was like, you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love her, you know, sense of humor, her mm -hmm. outlook. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I liked her character. I, again, I haven't seen the latest series, but I love her character. Um, so... It's hard not to like yeah, her. She's right. so talented. She's so good. Um, I think that that's one of those things. And this is like the good thing about actors when they do press runs. Right. Where it's like, no matter how you feel about it, I'm going to root for Nicola mm -hmm. regardless. Yeah. I know that there was like an article that came out that was like body shaming her. And her co-stars were like, you can go to hell. Right. <laughs> I loved every minute of her co-stars just being like, absolutely not. Like, we yeah. will shame you. Right. Um, and so. that's what it should be. Mm. Mm. Um, well, <laughs> let's get into G H, and we'll talk. I think oh. a little bit in. Um, we'll talk a little bit in. Um, kind of hot takes about some of the stuff on social media okay. for uh, Tabiana. This we week. didn't talk about your week, so do you want to share, or do you just want to say it was great? It was okay. <laughs> it was I was all right. <laughs> I was pretty boring. I was post. I was telling you, telling Tanya before we hopped on um, recording. That I was supposed to have traveled this week, but I've just been having like an ear, nose, and throat thing. And um, if anybody's ever ever traveled with congestion, you will never do it again. <laughs> That's you only need to do it once, and it's like a kid on a hot stove. You're like, oh, I will never do that again. No, yeah, it took me like I had suffered a similar thing. It took me a long time to get back on a plane. So. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the ear, nose, and throat gang. Uh, we know you're out there. We feel your pain. We pray. For real, feel the pain. <laughs> we understand. So yeah, congestion trains, is no joke. Trains are awesome. You know, I do love a train. <laughs> I do love a train. I so. took a train uh, last year from uh, from like Emeryville, Cal like Oakland to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I did it. Um, I think maybe five years ago from um, Emeryville to DC. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And those yeah. are lovely. And, and for people who are on the younger side, do it because everybody will take care of you. Because <laughs> we think, they think you're a novelty. So. <laughs> I think I was the youngest person on the long distance trip. And oh my God, I had grandparents and parents being like, you got to come and eat with us. And they were just so fascinated that That's I was so on cute. the train. That's really, really cute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love a train. Um, all right, uh, standout performance of the week. Okay, so we were talking earlier, and I was thinking, I was like trying to say, I was thinking to myself, it was hard because I feel the same actors that we had talked about last week were kind of being the ones that I was bringing up. So Maurice Bernard, you know, and his portrayal of the, you know, the struggle. And I liked the conversation that he had with Christina. Um, he was, you know, contrite. He brought her her favorite toy and he, you can hear the pain in his voice. And I thought he did an excellent job and, you know, awesome um, job to Kate Mancy too. just that back and forth. Um, and then again, Michael Easton playing the drunkard, but, you know, in denial, really in some crazy denial, going off on folks he shouldn't be going off on and just being, and he made me mad. And, <laughs> and so I didn't feel sorry for him at all. I was really just like, what the hell, man? And how are you just gonna put your daughter at risk like that and just have no sense of awareness about what you're doing um again it's just the disease of um addiction is so powerful and you know he portrayed that very well um but i also I issue to... with i have an issue i don't feel like the show has done a good job in letting me see that violence in danger i'm like well I just the idea of for me just impairment um is I think enough and then him bringing well she wasn't at home 
No, but, I mean, yeah. I think that there are more. Th anyway, that's not about the performances, but I do think that right. there's more that the show should do to yeah. show that he's in danger. I you have a feeling they're going to go. I think he, they're going to go there at some point because he has to hit serious rock bottom and he sure. has to actually see himself how he's not a good parent for Violet. I think they're going to go there eventually. But for me, what they're doing so far, I think is good. But I was also the new person and not even a new person, just somebody I haven't actually recognized before is um, new, new, new Molly. And that is Kristen Vaganos. I felt she was really um, portraying the anguish of where she's at with TJ very well and going to her sister and just being just really a hot mess. <laughs> it was, I think she did a great job with that. Um, I have more to say about that whole thing. Um, and, I, you know, some people who make me mad, I think they're still portraying um, a great scene. But for some reason, I I mean, I love the actor that plays TJ. I'm just like, ugh, I don't want to give that storyline any kind of props and just like, ugh, I don't know. What do you think? It's terrible. It's, <laughs> it's terrible. terrible. And I, I... I wanted TJ. TJ and Molly needed to break up. Not yes. like this, right? Like, because right. this is one fight. I just have so much to say. This is not really about performances, but yeah. I do think that Taj is, like, leading man material. Uh -huh. I wanted Taj to be, like, the new Patrick Drake. And yes. so to have him, like, be this character that is so wrong, I don't actually agree with anybody in this storyline. Maybe Molly oh. the most, but no, I don't. I mean, have TJ behaving is yeah. wild, and I'm like, TJ is too fine to be wasted in this storyline in this way. That's how I feel about it. It's just yeah, it's the storyline is def. It's hard to have uh, someone to empath have empathy for in this particular storyline because it just seems like I don't want to say typical, but we kind of know what's going to happen. Somebody. Either there's one or two things are going to happen, which we don't want necessarily, but you know, the baby's either going to be lost or there's going to be a custody battle and it's, it's going to be crazy. But right. I think the, the performance that um, Kristen did um, in that fight was great. And I appreciate that, especially, yeah. you know, as she's kind of newer on the scene and still trying to um establish herself as molly i think she's done a good job so far i agree i agree with that i mean i don't care for the character of molly but i think that this right. actress is doing well <laughs> yeah i think that she has great chemistry with kate mancy yeah um i don't so much see it with tj not that it's like right. it's not like a judgment call on like the acting because i think that sometimes we're like oh i don't think these people have chemistry right. that becomes about the actor so it's like some people just don't vibe in that way yeah. that is not necessarily about like talent or skill it's just about it doesn't you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it just doesn't it doesn't do it for me right. and 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 chemistry is subjective mm -hmm. so when i say this i don't think her and tj have chemistry i don't i don't mean that as a, a value judgment on either of them as actors right so let's get in the conversation though well let's talk about i mean <laughs> what story let's get into finn finn because i actually um see things a little bit different from you but uh liz came in saw finn with barb oh man oh still yeah i gotta give it up to um barb? <laughs> but becky no oh. <laughs> not barb oh yeah shout out to barb man she was amazing no <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh is barb who like the new like <laughs> we had to import a, a new girl for Finn because we are allergic to drama on this show, so we can't have somebody <laughs> we know. Right? Why can't we have uh, Rebecca? We have Rebecca Herbs. Why can't we have um, what's her name? Her name's Becky too, is it? No. Ooh. Um, Greenley. Oh, Greenley. <laughs> oh no, her name's a Becky. Or, yeah, no, her Rebecca, name is Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca Budig. Yeah, yeah, Rebecca yeah. Budig. We need the Rebeccas. <laughs> Rebecca or uh, uh, Hayden needs to come back and get her baby. Yes, she. That's exactly what needs to happen. Because Nicholas is in jail. You left because of what? Like it. The story. It's not curling all the way over. Get back mm -hmm. up here and get your baby. 
come back. Yes. Because the, the father is a hot mess. So <laughs> I will say, okay. Finn had a drink and Chalin was like, we got to take Violet. That was a little too much for me. I understand where we're going. I understand that, like, they're going to do, like, in retrospect, look at how bad he was. They were correct. But I just feel like the sequencing of the story is not going very well for me. Finn forgetting to take Violet to the pool or being like, you're not going to have that much time at the pool. Like, yeah, but people are in mourning and, like, you can get real stupid. Like, I just didn't... It's not enough for me to like it'd be different if like for example they were at the pool and Finn fell asleep at the pool and Violet almost drowned and then like if he wasn't paying attention but your, ki your kid kind of safe at home while you're you know hung over not ideal <laughs> but also not grounds to get your baby taken away I don't I just well no I, I, I agree because I didn't actually like the conversation that Chenlin was having last week and just like I just thought Ugh. I didn't like it at the same time you know just knowing on our end like if you're looking at it from an outside point of view you don't know that you know Finn is a former alcoholic you don't know anything else that about his struggle from the outsider point of view, yeah, it, it looks like everybody is really kind of overreacting. But we see that he is kind of out of control <laughs> with the drinking. And so that is not ideal um, to have, that's not the ideal parent to have um, for a young girl. Um, but yeah, I think they are going into overdrive partly because they don't want him to go any worse. And, um, but I'm interested in this story. Like this is this story has me outside of you know waiting for Sonny to get you know his life together. <laughs> it's the one that's drawing me in right now. Mm. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's the one that they're telling. I just, I, mm -hmm. I, I feel like, and this is not just with GH. I've just been watching a lot of things lately. I'm like what is the story we're trying to tell? I, I just feel like as an audience member, like I'm almost being like taken for granted, you know, like, and with GH, there are some things that we can like, um, you know, just what is it? Suspend disbelief for. I'm fine with that, but it's just like every single thing. Why every single thing? And so, yeah, I just feel like there needed to be a little bit better of a sequence because what they're gonna, what what I would imagine they're gonna do is like have him be negligent, and then people be like, "See, we were right." And it's like, but why? Are you, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like you didn't tell the story for me in a way that like made me feel like, um. That like that this behavior made sense. I do want to go back to Finn and Barb. <laughs> that will never not be funny for me. And I've never cared for Liz, but that has nothing to do with how I feel about Becky. Becky was giving in that breakup, okay? <laughs> giving more than either of her heart or Finn have ever given in that relationship. When she put that key in that drink. And then that fool drank it. I was like, this is disgusting. Yeah, because first of all, keys and metals have... Now, I, and I'm just recalling as a little kid. Now, I don't go around tasting keys. But I remember <laughs> when I was a little kid, I would put certain metals in my mouth, like keys or pennies. So they have a, a taste to it. You yeah. put it in alcohol, alcohol is going to clean it, first of all. So then the alcohol now is left dirty <laughs> with all the germs that was on that key. And you're going to drink that? Gross. That was a heck of gross. <laughs> was so gross. And that's, I mean, but he might have been that, you know, drunk anyway, where he didn't care what it tastes like. Because after a while, you don't care what it tastes like. <laughs> right people do drink rubbing alcohol so a little uh, alcohol really does it like it don't make a difference like people will drink listerine so i guess but the <laughs> this woman being like just like cover like, for liz like where did you find you? this doctor groupie 
who is this woman? She was heck of obvious. She wanted a good time when she was at that bar. It was a mess. And then it was funny to see Jason come in because it was like, why? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, he like Finn wasn't that violent. <laughs> he was just like, every one thing, if he shoved her and slapped her or something, but he didn't do any of that. He just and they said, wouldn't Don't ever leave. have him do that. Right. So they that. would never. So his, I mean, Jason's presence was like inserting him into the scene. Maybe he has that kind of contract too, where you need to be part of, you know, screen time. I think also, <laughs> you know, like Liaison um, has a fan base, and I'm sure that they mm -hmm. were trying to give those fans like a scene. I mean, I, who knows right. what's gonna happen with Jason? Who's gonna? Who knows who he's gonna end up being in a relationship with? But you know, it's fan service. Like it was the mm -hmm. same thing with him going to the pool with her and mm -hmm. putting his feet in the pool. I was listening to uh, Bradford and Steve's podcast, and Steve was just like, "Yeah, I hated it. I hate putting. I hate it. I didn't feel like Jason would ever put his feet in the pool." <laughs> <laughs> and a shout out to Jay getting away with. <laughs> well, not getting away with <laughs> almost like she was like. Apparently, she caught on to it, but she was like, "I'm just glad you called." <laughs> I know. I know. I just really adore Hudson mm -hmm. West as Jake just phenomenal casting he's so good it actually is really interesting when you look at like jason's sons mm -hmm. where it's like jake really does remind me of like jason quartermain mm -hmm. and danny reminds me of jason morgan mm -hmm. um and i i i hope that we get to see them in more scenes together right but Hudson's such a special little talent. He's always been so... I mean, again, I will always shout out the episode he did of Grey's Anatomy. If you haven't seen it, like, go and see it. That boy will break your whole heart. Um, he is just really, really talented. And I'm hoping, because we know he has the range, like, he mm -hmm. has beyond the range, I hope that we are able to see him in a, in a story that really, really... Um, it, like highlights and showcase that range because he's he can do it you can give that kid any with anything that's why um charlotte who is now shipped off again but mm -hmm. that actress and jake were like so good together because we knew that both of those they are like talented beyond their years yeah. um, and so i'm hoping that as this jason story progresses uh we get to see hudson like do his thing oh i'm like now sad that's Scarlet or Charlotte is out there and they don't get to do any more scenes together. They don't get to date anymore. Mm -hmm. Sad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she don't, she don't need to see what her dad's up to though. Man. Oh, daddy over here <laughs> real trifling. But, you know, she, you, last time we saw her, she was looking at her bullet wound like it was a, 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 a <laughs> badge of honor. Right. Like, uh, Actually, little... she probably would applaud it. So <laughs> little baby helena over there right like, okay dad let's do it let's do this let's go for this let's take over <laughs> pikeman and rule the world <laughs> right there you go. bring on the downfall of anna <laughs> throw her in jail that's what you know want. that's what she owes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um other parts of uh, his sobriety, uh, Finn's sobriety story, I think it makes sense to finally bring Alexis in. Yeah, You know, they gave the example or the excuse of why he didn't have, like, a sponsor, which kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because we hadn't really seen Finn struggling right. um, for, for a long time. And his, like, struggle was not ever with really with alcohol. So they tried to, like, kind of double back and explain why alcohol yeah. is, like, the thing that's happening with him now. Yeah, shout out to bringing the history, like, um, um, Elizabeth, she said, I remember when you were addicted to the pills with my sister, and I was just like, oh, man, I need to go back and watch them, because I don't remember that at all. Yeah. It must not have made that much of an impression on me, but now I need to go back. I mean, I also, I know that we never yeah. talk about Lucky on this show, but I would right. have loved for Liz to ha have, like, reached back into that history. Oh, yeah. That she was... had, right, she had kids when mm -hmm. Lucky was addicted. Mm-hmm. So and I her think... and Maxie were in. <laughs> right. Ooh. <laughs> 
and then um after she cheated on him he found out she cheated on him with uh with nicholas mm -hmm. he went back into like uh, uh, alcohol alcohol yeah. so like he was originally on pills now he's on alcohol it's like mm -hmm. such a like repeat. you know a yeah. repeat a history repeating itself with a, another partner of her so i just thought it was interesting that they didn't bring him up Mm -hmm. And I really wish they would have, because that's part of her history. I hate when they erase people. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he's still time. She might bring him up again. She might. Because, <laughs> you know, the writers watch our show and they get ideas from us. <laughs> if only. <laughs> if only. <laughs> um, so Christina and the surrogacy story. Um, you brought up the Sunny and Christina scene. I yeah. actually also thought it was good, but I laughed. I was like, uh, Sunny, you was not around Christina when she was a kid. I'm matter like, I don't remember that at all. <laughs> matter of fact, if you had questions about Christina as a kid, you probably need to ask Ned. Ooh. <laughs> Ned's probably the one that actually brought the dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you can tell that Mo and Kate Mancy just have a really good rapport with each other. They're mm -hmm. great scene partners. The father-daughter bond is um, really clear. And I, that was one of the things I was worried about because I liked Lexi's relationship with uh, with Mo. I thought that yeah. her Christina and uh, and Sunny had a really great relationship. And I'm I'm glad to see, um, I, I hate how naive they write Christina sometimes, but I do think mm -hmm. that they have a great relationship and a great rapport with each other. So those scenes were really powerful to me. Yeah, I agree. <sighs> but... Oh my God, TJ. Uh huh. Dude, dude. I mean, like, again, he keeps harping on the fact that he feels that Christina is putting his ch their child in danger, and then going back and saying, "Well, actually, I didn't ever wanted this to happen." Dude, there's so many points where you could have told Molly, "No, no, 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 no," and you didn't, and now you're just going back. It's just like. I'm I'm upset with you and I'm annoyed mm -hmm. by you as a character and I need you to go away because you're annoying mm -hmm. and I don't like it. He's being kind of a bully too. It's like one of those things like to pretend as if I, I never liked the Syracuse story. I understood they needed to tell a story but I, it never made sense for those characters because mm -hmm. To like all of a sudden make it seem like Molly was like so invested in having this biological child and all like when all we've known of Molly is that she's a non-traditional person. Like it should it was actually really shocking for her to get on this like I gotta have a biological child. I'm not a real woman if I can't have kids. Like I understand as a woman, like if you can't have kids, that does feel a way, but it just was like really shocking for it to be such a cornerstone of her story, considering that we've never seen that part of Molly. Molly is the person who you would imagine would like adopt a bunch of kids and like, you know, just like that whole bleeding heart, like, okay, like we're going to foster to adopt kind of people. So this idea that they are like so obsessed, I like it almost feels like they should have done a little repeat of the baby hope story with TJ and Molly and had them like have this baby um, that they like adopt or like fostered and thought they were going to adopt and then lost or something that I think would have made more sense for them. But this whole like I need a bi biological kid story just never stuck for them. It never made sense. Yeah. I mean, you don't even really see them getting ready. Their child is coming right. in a month and a half. We don't see them putting together the crib. We don't see them painting the room. They don't, you know, shopping for, you know, none of that. And so it's like weird that they they seem so removed from the idea of being parents, yet so super, con like TJ, so super concerned over what Christina is doing and what she's witnessing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you really cared, you're not even really, I'm not really even seeing you caring about the idea of parenthood. And yet you're just so possessive of Christina and her every mood, her every attitude, whatever she's doing, it doesn't vibe. And it's like, it's just mean and unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that there's some, 
I think there's something to like if you wanted to tell the story of TJ having an issue with Sunny, it should absolutely center on Curtis being shot and mm-hmm. like how and like almost having TJ have the same realization about Sunny that Christina had because right. TJ has always had a good relationship with uh, with Sunny. Sunny exactly. took care of him when um, Sean went to jail from him for him and like so if you would have had you know those things when one thing happens all the other dominoes fall. Right. So if we would have had TJ like seeing this thing happen with Sunny and um, Curtis being shot and then saying like, oh, you know, I know he only took care of me and we only had this relationship because my dad went to jail because of him. And I'm now seeing him like, you know, fully. And this is dangerous to have our baby around. Mm-hmm. And to your point, if we also saw them getting ready for the baby, I think another thing that we should have been seeing them is like Christina looping them out of baby stuff. Like right. not the stuff with Sunny, because that's silly, but yeah. like going to the doctor without them or having like, oh, Christina got upset and didn't tell us. What are you talking about? Oh That's my god, she silly. was crying? Yeah, <laughs> she, right. she didn't say anything? <laughs> It'd be different if, like, she had a panic attack and Blaze mm-hmm. had to take her to the hospital to get oxygen, right? Like, right. that would have been, like, valid to say, somebody told me Christina was in the hospital and she didn't call us. Yeah. But not I got up, she got upset and didn't tell us. Who do you think mm-hmm. you are? Right. It's just it's just a poor another example of a very poorly done story that mm-hmm. didn't have to be poorly done if you wanted to tell it. Yep. I also think what would have been more interesting for the surrogacy piece of it would have been like the redo of like if you remember all my children, the mm-hmm. Kendall Greenlee Ryan story, mm-hmm. w- which is like um Christina went to go in, get inseminated with Molly and TJ's baby and then something happened and so she had to use her egg and TJ's sperm. That would have, I think, been more dramatic because, like, now it's just, like, for real. Oh, yeah, and the same with Maxie, too, right? Maxie right, but Maxie third. used her own egg and Spinelli's sperm. Or it wasn't okay. even that. She, it yeah. was... Her egg, yeah, and, miscarried. It was a whole, yeah, really she miscarried and then her and pregnant. Spinelli, yeah, and then got pregnant. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is a whole nother. I was like, is this? I don't think this is how this works, but okay, <laughs> it okay. happens. Been a woman my whole <laughs> life, but interesting, uh, <laughs> like. Got to cuss all my OB on all of this. You um, have a spontaneous miscarriage, and then you know do you know have sex and then the next day still be pro- i mean some people be like you know you're on birth control and you have sex and you still get pregnant <laughs> it's just this is like a different i'm like is this right like this? okay right um, body yeah. body is a wonderland i guess <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it just it was anyway all that to say i just so molly goes to christina and is like crying about tj Mm -hmm. and all and it's like damn your sister can't even vent to you without you being like okay so how do i get her baby now they're gonna break up so what do i do (laughs) what like they never fight ever and so one fight is that's it they're gonna break up and now i have to figure out what to do with this baby yeah conveniently after sister can't tell you right like my sister calls me and tells me about her husband and she loved her husband. So like, this is what you do with your sister and your girlfriends. You're right. able to like vent to them and say the things. And I know I've got, you know, have said many things. And then you get back with the person that you love and like you're able to like move forward because you've gotten some of the worst things out. <laughs> right. But mindfully, like keep in mind, this like Christina comes in to talk to, I mean, Molly comes in to talk to Christina right after Christina and Blaze were having a conversation about how they want a baby. <laughs> so it's already like, okay, they're putting the idea it. in their head, like, this is our baby. This is our fantasy baby. And so, yeah, I can see how easy it was for Christina to jump to that kind of conclusion because subconsciously she wants that baby to be hers anyway. She's just exactly. looking for a reason. 
And then going to Alexis, right? As if Alexis is not Molly's mom as well. This is that mm-hmm. flaky, right? Selfish nonsense that everybody says about you. Because yeah. why in the world would you do that? Right. It would have been it's- more interesting if she'd have gone to Diane. Yes. And she sure could have. She could have gone to anybody. She could have gone to Google. She could have gone to you know Scott. <laughs> She could have gone to Google because all yeah. Alexa sent her was some Google searches. Exactly. But she wanted to put her mom in the middle of this conversation. Right. It's like <laughs> you could have been Googling it and then like this is always me rewriting things. She could have been Googling it and then Alexis would have looked over her shoulder like, what you looking at? Right. And then they could have had that same conversation. Yep. But no, because, you know, she came in. She's like, look, I know you're Molly's mom, but you're my mom, too. So I'm like, so you still thinking that you deserve all of the attention? <laughs> Apparently. What a mess. <laughs> what a mess. Um, yeah. And shout out to Alexis being like, I knew this was going to happen. So I already have the links already. But I okay. told y'all, she kept saying it over and over. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Are you sure? I'm just having, like, you guys need to know the law. And, you know, and they were all, but... But we're like hunky dory and we're sisters and we love one another and nothing's gonna happen. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> well, we all knew what was gonna happen as we were watching it. <laughs> so And it's like for a story, I don't mind a story. Like, you know, we watch soaps, we know the tropes. I don't mind a story where we know stuff is gonna happen, but mm-hmm. at least tell it in an interesting way. Yeah. At least give us all of the bells and whistles instead of being like, well, they know, so it don't matter. Like we right. said, Molly and TJ could easily be having these arguments while they are putting together the, the kids' room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, the, it's just, like, not difficult. Mm-hmm. TJ could literally be, like, talking crazy while he's building a crib. Mm-hmm. Picking out baby names or any of this stuff that they could and, be doing. <laughs> right. And not. then like TJ could have said something like, Molly, you don't seem to be like into this, or I'm the only person who's doing this. And Molly right. then has this same breakdown about how like she's worried that Christina mm-hmm. will keep, you know, that kind of anyway. Let me stop mm-hmm. rewriting this. I'm tired of it. <laughs> I'm just like, if we can see her on Zoom and rewrite some of these things, it just mm-hmm. feels a little frustrating to me that these are not some of these things are not infused into the stories maybe that's where why we're seeing kind of a switch up with the writers and you know maybe i don't know but no my only hot take was in this was tj is an ass 100 percent. that's it one one thousand (laughs) percent one (laughs) thousand um next thing drew running for congress (laughs) here's the thing my hot take true for congress may <laughs> it's also just like it, I got so, over. so much of my work has been with like congress so like the way they talk about this man is laughable to me now i will say that like it is true that a lot of people who like don't like congress but will love their congress member i love our current congress member shout out to barbara lee mm-hmm. um but this idea that there's like this man who works across the aisle and he's the get out of here. Get out of here. Do you know we have to live in this country? We know Congress doesn't work like this. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> it's just it, anyway. Um, so now Drew might have to na- change his name to Quartermain. <laughs> uh I don't I I remain frustrated because th- I really thought we were going to get Drew and Jordan. And now I don't want Drew and Jordan. I just This story just has no interest for me whatsoever. None. None. No. I was more invested in Drew being angry at Jason and wanting to do some revenge. I don't know. That would have been more interesting even if it was confusing but interesting it was more interesting than Mm -hmm. him being like all of a sudden i want to run for congress what does that mean what is that simp for nina yeah and what does that mean are we going to start having scenes 
and on the election campaign, him knocking on doors and doing everything that I'm <laughs> doing. <laughs> that would be crazy. Him going to D.C. and having an office, squaring away with his opponent. Who's his opponent? Or is he just going to waltz right into this office and nothing's going to happen? Are there going to be debates? Is he going to have to fundraise? What's going on? <laughs> They're not going to have any of the time or the energy to do any of that to make and it I, compelling. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just like we've never, we've never cared about politics in this world. Right. So, like, why would we care now? The only politics that we've ever cared about is mayor. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if they would have recalled Laura for being on some BS and Drew would have ran against her, I, I could have been interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> I could have been interested. I mean, it looks like they're trying to get her to be recalled anyway with this Heather mess. Bring on the recall family. Bring on the recall scenes. I loved it. (laughs) There, you know. Um, What was I going to say about that? Oh, I. I, They still also have it explained to me why Drew would uh, would help Nina with Willow. Yeah, because I think. I think they're trying to allude that maybe Drew is actually attracted to Nina, so he kind of subconsciously wants to help her. I don't know, but then we were confused because we thought that like, Willow and Drew might have an affair because of the chemistry that they have. We don't know what's going on with them at all. I don't think they know either. That drill, <laughs> that drillo Kim is nothing to mess with. Um, <laughs> but it's also like so manipulative, mm-hmm. you know. Like you know, Willow trusts you. You saved her life. She cares for you. And then all of a sudden, now you're gonna like what? Try to trick her into spending time with Nina. And why? That's so ugly. Is Nina I don't, gonna? I don't, yeah. I don't even mind Nina and Willow having a relationship, whatever. I was tired of, like, the back and forth and all that drama. It was, like, I was over it. But having Drew seem like he's manipulating Willow when she's been manipulated so much in her life, Mm -hmm. it's gross. It's gross. It is. And unnecessary. Because Willow will get there on her own. She doesn't need Drew to do this middleman thing. (sighs) Mm. Uh well another scene I did enjoy this week was Sam I love me some Sam Spinelli's Sam Spin, um and then Sam flirting with Jagger at the pool to get his like FBI card or whatever. Uh I love I loved it. I wrote Sam and her PI shenanigans and why did I write I don't know what happened but I wrote down John Jagger Jinkelheimer Smith. <laughs> don't you always do that with him though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I wrote it again because he said his full name and it was like John Jack or Jika so <laughs> I mean he's nosy I, I wrote that he's nosy as hell for some reason I don't know it also feels so unlikely that he mm-hmm. wouldn't know who Sam is yes because Dante and them were kind of working together on the whole Sunny had a, a hit out on him and so Dante would never mention Sam at all in that interaction. But also, like, he should know who Sam, Jason's ex-wife and baby mama is. Right. And Liz, too. Like, I thought that he about? would catch on when she said, yes, my my ex disappeared with no think, explanation. Why didn't he catch on to that clue? I think maybe he did, but was, like, almost embarrassed. Like, oh, I was the reason. That's kind of how I caught it. Or he was there. Yeah. Either way, I was just like, what are we, what's going on? Right. But it was funny. <laughs> she was all flirtatious with him. When is she not? She's so She's funny. Hilarious. I love Sam doing P.I. shenanigans. It <laughs> frustrates me that we don't have more of Sam doing P.I. shenanigans. She, like, yes. give my girl back her things P.I. Shenanig- shenanigans for the win <laughs> well for we do win. we do have Trina talking to Laura Ooh. Curtis talking to Heather how did you feel Trina, about these Trina was giving it to Laura big time and Laura was scrambling to try to come up with some answers and it wasn't working <laughs> I didn't believe one word that Laura said. And you know what? I think Trina could have a good um, p- job as an investigative journalist because she was 
She was actually drilling Laura. Either that or a lawyer. I don't want her to be a lawyer. So an investigative journalist. Because <laughs> she, was, she was really good at asking these really probing questions. And Laura was just not... She was not up to par, which was surprising. Mm-hmm. You know, Laura doesn't even actually know what she wants to do with this. <laughs> Again, mm-hmm. the writing is crazy on this because Laura, I mean, she's like, it's just the right thing to do. I'm like, it's not good enough. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, I wanted Trina to go harder on her. Right. Um, I feel like Trina. You know, something I think happens um, it, is that they are they don't know how to allow Trina. Let me back up. I think that they are so because they're so close to the audience. I think the writers, I think mm-hmm. all of this that like they don't know how to allow Trina to like do something that people might deem unlikable. For the sake of growing her character. Because you remember when uh, Trina was mad at uh, Jordan yeah. and yeah. Curtis? She, Every time she saw them, it was up. Okay? Well, just remember when Trina was trying to find out what was going on with her dad and she was pissed at her dad because he pretended to be dead? She it was on site with a lot of people. Every she was time. <laughs> Every time. And so she could do that with Laura. But I think and she's I trying think to, that's fine. Yeah. And I think that they're trying to be like, no, Trina is like our heroine and it's this mm-hmm. and it's that. And it ends up like, um, it ends up not being fair and like filling out her character in the way that they should. Mm-hmm. Because if you think about it, for example, Jocelyn could go to Laura, or to Anna and talk nonsense about Dex. It was right. nonsense. <laughs> Yeah. But I loved the scene. I loved seeing Fanola. I mm. loved seeing um, Eden. It just like really, she sounded ridiculous. Jocelyn, <laughs> I mean, I love Jocelyn. You know, that's my girl. Mm. She sounded ridiculous. Right. It was a good scene because they didn't care about allowing her to sound ridiculous. With Trina, I think that they're like, they maybe have her in this protective bubble so that the audience like will always like her. Mm. And I am here to say, I'm going to like Trina regardless. <laughs> I don't care. I don't right. care what Trina cusses out. Okay? I'm going to still like her. Well, so. maybe, yeah, because they're seeing the the backlash of when Portia does it, right? Right okay. now, Portia Portia's on site and don't give a damn about anything. And so when Portia does it, the fans just be all like, Portia's so mean and Portia's this and Portia's that. You know, they don't want, they don't want that, they don't want that kind of reaction for Trina, I guess. 100%. Right. Because I was seeing a little bit of bubbling up of people asking, like, why we haven't seen Trina and Portia together. Uh And I was like, well, that's interesting because for a long time, people were like, didn't like Portia and wanted Trina to cuss Portia out and like, really preferred to see Trina with Ava. So Mm -hmm. I think that like. For me, I you know, audiences could ask. I'm I'm I very rarely am gonna blame the audience for what they ask for. Mm-hmm. I blame the writers for not knowing how to take in feedback. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're you should write a good story and let the good story like go. What the problem is is that you are like hopscotching around and you're not writing a good story. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I've always hated Jason and Liz. That's never been my ship. I was an OG Jace Hammer. But when they were writing Liaison, they were also writing other good stuff to me around it. Mm-hmm. So I can watch this even though I hated them together. Just on a personal level. But, the right. story, but I'm going to take it because I see other parts of the story being really, really good. So... Mm-hmm. I really wish that these writers would say, even if people don't particularly like a pairing or like this or like a character in this moment, you have to allow people to just like start liking someone. You have to give people, look at the story they've done for Cody. Mm -hmm. I know you don't like Cody, but people like him now. You know what I mean? Like he started off one way and now he's a different way because you've allowed him to grow this way. And it's like, it's like, the black women particularly don't get this like ability. True. So anyway, speaking of Heather, 
I thought I totally forgot that Diane was a victim of Heather. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that whole scene was actually pretty interesting. And, and to find did, out like, the Franco, the Franco, yeah, the whatever. Franco thing. I was just like, what is Alexis talking about? And then she was like, Franco. I was like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of a good setup and reveal. It was because I totally I, forgot. I didn't particularly care for the Curtis and Heather scenes. Um, yeah. I actually, I mean, again, I think this is you know whatever. I would have preferred it to be Portia and Heather to be honest. Yeah, because Portia would have been on site. It would have been less forgiving. She would have been like, I don't care about your feelings. <laughs> you can cry yeah, all you want to. <laughs> right. You basically got this black man against these white women's tears. Right. And you know how Curtis and white women are. <laughs> I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> so Curtis, go find go get uh, Violet's mom. Go bring her back. Right. Do something baby. productive. <laughs> um, let's get into Geo and Trina. Um, so Geo comes to the gallery, he plays his violin for Ava and Trina, he gets hired, and Trina is like, he's an artist. <laughs> First of all, I had this hot take. I'm like, like why is Geo telling strangers he doesn't know that his uncle would pay his tuition? <laughs> That was so funny to me. I was like, like, Ava didn't ask you all that, yet you just felt the need to tell everybody. Yo, no one we'll asked you this. <laughs> Everyone we'll asked you this. I'm like, I wouldn't tell people who's paying my tuition. I mean, you take. She said, "I'm sure your parents are glad that you got a scholarship." But all he would have, all he should have said was, "Yeah." <laughs> That's all he had to say. <laughs> But he's on this thing where it seems like he wants everyone to know that he's connected to Sunny in some way. Or the writers are, you know, the beating over our head. But yes, but yes, but yes, 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 yes. You know, I'm just like, why? <laughs> What's crazy? But yeah. His, his uncle, Sonny. Um, <laughs> I, well, I, I have my feelings. How did you feel about the scenes? I know that you weren't really sold on them before. I mean, again, <laughs> she's like, he's an artist. I'm like, yeah, I guess. But that's not the kind of art you're interested in. <laughs> I don't know. He's still, I'm not, I'm not sold on him yet. Mm -hmm. He's an interesting, you know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then the whole apartment thing, what is, I mean, it's a nice apartment for young people. I guess that's going to be the new hangout spot in the pool. I guess they're tired of hanging out at the quarter mains or in the, you know, the horse thing. I have many things. I want to take it one at a time. (laughs) Um, So I would, so I do want to talk about them at the gallery. Um, okay. I do agree that that's not her kind of art, but what I appreciated was her talking about it being like a complimentary thing, like that it right. like that this art made this art feel more like poignant. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna give it a chance. I thought they were cute together. I thought they. I thought I saw a little spark. Um, and I want Trina to have good story. Um, I want Trina to have romance. I will say this, and you know, please don't cancel me in the comments. Or you can't cancel me, that's okay. <laughs> I think that what what I see with Geo is the lack of what they were doing with Spencer. Mm. And that was part of my issue with Sprina, which is like, what do you have Spencer doing? So that oh, yeah. even when Spencer died, or fake died like his obituary was all about stuff that he was doing when he was young yeah because he didn't have he didn't have no other life when it was just Sprina or ace right when he <laughs> came on you know he was talking about art he was talking about like drama and plays mm-hmm. he was like auditing classes he started to work because he lost his inheritance and then as soon as he got it back, we saw him doing nothing. Mm-hmm. And I know I got frustrated. Remember the time they went to New York and he was like, oh, you don't need to do your homework. Come with me. I was like, that's not, you know what I mean? Like, right. I want to see him be like, let me help you so that we can get there. And then him being like, oh, I kind of miss school now. But right. like, they didn't. And so when we see like this, this Geo character, he's working multiple jobs. He's like leaning into like the art that mm-hmm. is like the thing that's going to connect him to Trina. And for me, it just, it it really puts me in a space of frustration 
because I was like, what were y'all doing with Sprina? Mm-hmm. You're, like, if, if this is what you're doing here, then you could have done this with Sprina and y'all chose not to. And right. that for me is really frustrating. On the other hand, you know, when, I sh- when I'm a fan of a woman character, as long as the ship is not offensive, I'm a ship it because I want to see my girl doing well. I want to see my girl be loved and adored. I want to see all of that. So I'm going to give Gio and Trina, aka Trio, a chance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to give them a chance. Um, and I'm going to hope that they like build out something that is interesting between the two of them. He has great hair. He does. He does. <laughs> Um, I would also say this, that like, you know, I do think it's interesting that they're building him such a robust backstory. They're building out um, his relationship with Sonny, his relationship with the Cirillos, his relationship with Lo- uh, with um, Olivia and the Falconaries. Right. And it's actually what they didn't do with Rory. Oh, yeah. They Rory didn't do- was like, had nothing. All he had was Trina, which is like, then the the there was nothing, nowhere for the nowhere for the story to go because Trina was essentially like carrying Rory on his her back because like mm-hmm. he wasn't doing anything else. With Geo, they seem to be trying to tell a story for him that is complementary to Trina. And mm-hmm. so again, like I said, I'm gonna give it a chance because I want to see Trina do uh, have like a good romance. I want her to show that she's like a multi shippable character. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give it a chance. I mean, I'm 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 glad that she has a a story, I guess, with you know Geo. But I would have preferred again a story with her dad, bring her dad back. Um, you know, other things. It doesn't necessarily have to be a romance. I guess for me, I feel like it's too soon. Mm. <laughs> I'm just not ready to let go of the Aww. idea, Brina. Yeah, it's I yeah. really. They're gonna like I'm hoping that they're gonna bring back, you know, Spencer. I don't know. So I'm just like, okay, fine. <laughs> but I think the like beauty of it, right, is that right. if if that is what happens, you want her to be in the situation where she has these feelings for mm. Rory, and then there becomes like a very compelling triangle. Because right. not, I'm sorry, not Rory, Woo, Geo. Geo, yeah, and, and I only bought a Rory because that wasn't a compelling triangle. It was not. <laughs> like she yeah. didn't even you never got the you never got the sense that she cared about him in any way that's comparable to how she felt about Spencer. Right. Like it was just like very clear he was a placeholder. Yeah. And that is fine for as, as a Sprina shipper, but as a Trina fan. I want to see her in something that got some light. If you remember, like the Emily Xander Nicholas like triangle, it was clear that Emily and Nicholas were going to be together, but Xander and Emily were really cute, and, yeah. and they had like a really like a substantial history per- before it was Natalia's Emily, uh, T- Amber Tamblyn's Emily and Xander had a very long history. Um, so I think, you know, for Trina, I do want for her to have like something going on if and when he comes back so that it does become like really compelling um in the way that they tell the story yeah so spencer can come back he could be a more mature a more focused man coming back and trina be really like oh my god spencer is new and improved and he's still fine and oh my god what am I going to do? Because I got Geo too. Mm-hmm. That could be compelling. It could be compelling. I mm-hmm. am, I'm, and not that you have to not do this, but I'm going to talk about them or think about them separately because mm-hmm. I think that Trina deserves a romance. I, I just feel like when they had Sprina for both, t- uh, for both characters, um, but particularly for Trina, they didn't really have her doing anything outside of being Spencer's mm-hmm. girlfriend, which right. is why there was so much flailing with what to do with this character once Spencer was presumed dead, because it was like that, and that not only that, but then they took away school from her too. Mm-hmm. So it was like very frustrating 
Um, so I am hoping, and I'm going to give Gio and Trina a chance, independent of Spencer, because I think that for me, that's what I want to see Trina grow with. I I just yeah, I, it's been it had it's been really frustrating, and I think to your point about Portia and about about uh, Trina's dad, aka Taggart. Mm-hmm. It's really right because it ain't good. <laughs> it's really difficult to build out one strong character mm-hmm. if you don't have a strong family. Mm-hmm. So they have not given compelling story to Portia. I know they tried to do the Curtis got shot thing, not compelling. No, like the compelling story actually is Taggart dealing with his alcoholism. But you have to build up the entire Black... If you... I don't watch YNR. I know you do. From my understanding, that Black... That whole Black family got stuff going on. Yep. It's not like, okay, we all love Lily, so, like, only Lily is doing whatever. It's like, no, that whole family is on some mess. Right. (laughs) And everybody loves it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right and so i think that that is like something that's kind of missing with the ashfords and that whole like mm-hmm. th- like family the whole family ain't got something going on and if the whole family doesn't have something going on we're not gonna have something going on for trina so i think all of that makes sense and, ma- and matters to me personally mm-hmm. agree also um Edward is rolling over in his grave and all of Carly's kids living at the quarterback. <laughs> I said, what is this? I know Jocelyn going to be at the quarter mains, Michael at the quarter mains. Like, Anna's going to be over there pretty soon. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, because of the camp, the supposed camp that's happening at the quarter mains. So all the little kids are going to be over there. I need Tracy to have something shady about Tracy's gonna kids. Tracy's gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> I need Tracy to say something very clear about Carly's kids being there because what is this? And y'all know I love Carly Zow. Right. And I was like, <laughs> all of Carly's children on the quarter man estate? Right. That's all we need is just Donna's leftover. We need to find a reason for Donna to be there, and then it's just gonna be like Tracy's gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> my goodness so funny uh, um yeah that was that cracked me up i was like okay well um we know mac i mean this is a little bit of a a spo- uh, like a spoiler or a preview but we know mac is coming back mm-hmm. um and so we did see a, a scene of cody and sasha talking about mac the, the lie yeah <laughs> So that's yeah. happening. We'll see what happens from there. Uh-huh. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that um, has happened. Let's see. Did I write that's down it. any other to- that's topics? That's all I got in my notes. So there might be yeah. other things, but that's all I got. What do you think about the rumor about an old character coming back or old actor coming back? Who do you think it might be? So what's really funny is so obviously we know Brian Craig jumped out the window and was like, <laughs> interesting. And I was like, oh my God, is Morgan coming back? Right. Um, and I think that people have been like, nah, he was just saying something. <laughs> He's just being <laughs> getting in the middle. He's just getting in the mix. I don't think <laughs> um I hope it's lucky. That's who I want to come back. I hope it's lucky. I don't think it's gonna be Jonathan Jackson. Um, um and, and though I do love Jonathan Jackson deeply like love Jonathan Jackson that's like my lucky soulful poetic guitar playing like that's my lucky Mm -hmm. and Greg Vaughn is just like fine ass lucky well the rumor has it is that Greg is gone at days right right and so So. because I think like a Jonathan Jackson Uh is more like short term if they brought him back it would be you know a very very short arc which yeah. is the only reason if they bring lucky back that's not what i want i would prefer to just bring greg vaughn back who right seems to be willing and open to like yeah be long term yeah um i i i think that if they brought jonathan jackson back it was like the last time they brought jonathan jackson back we didn't get him paired with liz for real I was right. like, what is this? I was he so He came back mad. for the down. He came back for the tear down. 
<laughs> and I'm like, we Epic. didn't even get them back together. He started, he married some Shabbat. Like, what is this? Yeah. I don't know what that was crazy. I, no, <laughs> not at all. Hated it. Um, and so if it like I feel like damn if it's if it's JJ comes back, I definitely want to see like an LNL two moment. Right. But I also don't want Liz to be in some kind of short term relationship that ain't going nowhere. Because yeah. you know, like John, because JJ leaves. Um, and I also didn't really think her her and Greg Vaughn had fine chemistry. It yeah. wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it wasn't what I needed for Liz and Lucky because LNL two was like really special. Um but yeah, but having like having the character Lucky back would be compelling for multiple reasons. One, yeah. because of Jason. Two, because what the hell is Laura doing? Where is my sister Lulu? <laughs> I mean, we need another cop back that's not young and could actually work well with Dante. You know, all the stuff. Ooh, um, J- like Greg <laughs> Vaughn and Greg Vaughn, Bob? find us Greg Vaughn and Dante together. Oh, Woo! God. <laughs> Sam got her brotherhood, another brotherhood, Brother? right? Because <laughs> she got Dante, she got Drew. <laughs> Bring in Greg Vaughn's lucky. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> that was me being messy, y'all. Don't worry about that, right? So, yeah, so, yeah. lucky would have multiple storylines to, to tap into. Mm-hmm. I also wouldn't mind it being Alcazar. I did oh, see yeah. a picture of Ted King like at CBS Studios. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that's short term or long term, but I would not mind it being Alcazar. He, um, yeah, he being at Bold and the Beautiful is kind of recurring. Yeah. Um, and so his character is not necessary to whatever storyline's going on there. So he could come back and be yeah. compelling. Was it as Blaze's dad, I guess? Is that what the, the whole oh. sentiment is? Yeah, because there is something that they're saying that, like, uh, homophobic Maria Santos might add yeah. more to her than, like, right. we thought. Right. Um, <laughs> um, but, so, yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I also wouldn't mind him, like, looking at Carly again. Right. Um, even, even though, though Brennan and Carly, Brennan and Carly do have good Kim. Brennan, Brennan is a mess. He is in all the best ways. Yes. <laughs> his like playing off of Laura Wright and Fanola and his <laughs> like standing them and saying they're like some of the best actresses he's ever worked with. This is what I need in a man. You stand right. my faves. Right. Because nobody is doing it like Fanola Hughes, period. Mm-hmm. And nobody's doing it like Laura Wright. Period. So these are like just amazing actresses and like to have this man come in and be and know that he is lucky to be working with them right exactly what i need and alcazar man where's selena Wu? but anyway alcazar could come in and take over where sunny is just like falling to pieces and actually you know so there's you know good storyline for him to come back to um yeah so those yeah. would I think those would be my choices would be Lucky or Alcazar. Some people are saying and Jerry Jax or Julian, and I'm like, eh. I don't want to. I don't um, care about Julian. Yeah. So. And I wouldn't mind Jerry Jax. Was somebody else? Were you were thinking about? No, I said I wouldn't mind Jerry Jax. Oh yeah, I, I wouldn't I mind want, him either. I don't care about Julian. I would not want yeah. him. Yeah. Because Jerry, yeah, Jerry also he had that romance with Alexis. And I just wanted, I would be interesting to see that dynamic between him and Jocelyn. Like, would we see, like, would we see a more mature Uncle Jerry? I don't know. (laughs) So there's lots, yeah, lots to explore. Yeah. Um, Other things that happen kind of behind the scenes, I don't know if you saw um, that Tamiana um, clapped back at a racist troll. um, And Yeah. yeah, good for her. Um, and a lot of the the act, a lot of the other cast came out and supported her. You know, for me, I'm always like, ignore, ignore, ignore. ignore. But the mm-hmm. moment she didn't ignore, we in formation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got to talk about it, right? Um, and so, um, I'm gonna. We will continue to uplift her, um, and we will also continue to cuss out racist trolls. I mean, it's really no if and is if ands or buts about it. People mm-hmm. deserve to be able to come to work without being harassed. Right. Um, 
and I did see the the particular person. Um, they had a lot of Donald Trump stuff in their um, in their profile and on their page. Um, yeah, it's just it's gross. If I was an actor on GH, I would never step into the cesspool that is Twitter. Um, and I really do hope that Tabiana is surrounded by um, a bunch of people who really, really love her and um, who uplift her because for every one troll, there's, you know, a hundred mm -hmm. thousand, like a hundred, a thousand people behind her who, um, who support her. So. Yep. Ooh. That's all I got. All right. Do you have any other hot takes? Nope. All right, let's get into previews for next week. Monday, Carly is suspicious. Drew makes an announcement. Nina gets a thrilling invitation. Alexis confronts Finn. Cody gets food for thought. Tuesday, Anna accepts the invitation, probably from Evil Team. Evil Team is back. <laughs> um, Jagger throws Jason for a loop Cody and Sasha get closer Scott confers with Lucy okay Ooh. Sam makes a request of Carly Wednesday also Juneteenth happy Juneteenth also happy Kendrick happy Lamar in LA pop out <laughs> uh, <laughs> Max Scorpio returns Yay. Cody confides in Tracy. Stella encourages Chase. Oh my God, I forgot. We didn't talk about the Stella and oh, um, Tracy scene. Tracy scene. Oh, yeah. And that was my favorite of the week. I love them. Yeah, they are good together. Loved I it. also love how Black ladies say the name Marcus. Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like Marcus. Marcus. I love it. So Wait, the way it. you said it makes me think of, um, you know, um, Loda or Thin Lie Between no, the Eight. No, um, God, um, the one with Eddie Murphy and he was a vampire. Playboy. No, he was a playboy and Eartha Kitt played this character. She said, Mark. Why did, am I like thinking a sick, Thin Lie? Anyway. No, okay. Boomerang. It's Boomerang. That's right. All these movies <laughs> like blend together for me. Yes. Yeah. Marcus. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Alexis gets big news. Natalia and Sunny Bond. Brooklyn <laughs> ponders her options. I love that I don't read these before I get on. So I'm just like, what? <laughs> Thursday, Carly warns Jason. Sam is livid. I hope, uh -oh. I wonder if that's going to be Sam finding out why Jason's been gone. Yeah, we should probably. About, that's about Carly. I hope they let her pop off. She will. Um, Finn lashes out. Again, I guess. Um, <laughs> Nina, Nina confides in Maxie. Gio learns more about Trina. And then Friday, Jason makes a big decision. Carly makes a shocking revelation. Maxie and Spinelli are concerned. Sam is on the warpath. Mm. Tracy feels an emergency. Yeah, Sam's gonna find out. <laughs> and she deserves to pop off. Right. So, yeah. But what revelation is Carly gonna make that's shocking? Who knows? Maybe she, know, maybe she fi finally finds out about Sonny's meds. Oh, and tells people? Oh, well, you know she'll <laughs> tell everybody. Um, right. <laughs> um okay well you know thank you so much especially if you made it all the way to the end we appreciate you make mm -hmm. sure that you like subscribe comment share let people know about sunday shift and until then we will see you bye bye